Hi, and welcome to Object Undefined. Here you'll find bite-sized lessons in software architecture, computer science, and AI designed to fit into your busy day. Imagine your order service charges a customer twice. Yes, twice. All because a single timeout caused a retry? Today we'll learn how idempotency protects your system and your users from painful duplicate operations. In the previous video, we covered retry patterns and what to do when services temporarily fail. The link to it you can in the description below. However, retries can also cause significant damage when the operation should not occur twice, such as a payment. Let's take a real example. Order service calls payment service to charge the user. Payment service actually processes the payment successfully. But the response never returns, possibly due to a network glitch, timeout, or broken connection. The order service using one of the retry patterns will send the payment request again. The payment will be processed successfully for this time also. The order service will receive a successful response this time. The user will receive the notification, order completed. But the user was charged twice, and they will know about it only from the credit card billing report. Obviously, it will not be a pleasant surprise and may harm your company's reputation. If you liked this video, hit like and subscribe to Object Undefined. And let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. The solution. Define payment as an idempotent operation. But let's look first at what idempotency is. An idempotent operation always produces the same result, no matter how many times you run it. Let's take, for example, an SQL query. Run it one time, run it 10 times, the result is still age equals 30. Now compare it with this one. Every execution adds 30 years. The operation definitely is not idempotent. Some operations must behave idempotently, even if they aren't naturally idempotent. Payments, reservations, withdrawals, inventory changes, so how do we turn a non-idempotent action into an idempotent one? Order service will attach a unique idempotency key to the request. Usually, it will be a UUID or GUID. If the idempotency key exists in the idempotency database, it means this specific request was processed already and the previous response will be returned. Otherwise, the payment service will process the request and will store the response in the idempotency database under the provided key. We just explored an approach where the stored response is returned in case of a repeated idempotent request. Another approach is to retrieve a dedicated error. In case of rest, it will usually be 409 conflict, 412 precondition failed. An example of the idempotency NestJS interceptor can be found in the sample repository of the object undefined. The link to it is provided in the description of the video. So what are the key takeaways? An idempotent operation is an operation that does not change the outcome given the same input. While retries are crucial for system resilience, they can be disastrous when applied to non-idempotent services. To convert a non-idempotent operation to an idempotent one, add an idempotency key and track it using a dedicated repository. If you liked this video, hit like and subscribe to Object Undefined. And let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. Thanks for watching.